Thanks for checking out this No Spoilers movie review. Uh, this is going to be about the 2014 film Starry Eyes by uh, Kevin Kolsch and Dennis Widmeyer. Uh, these are, yes, the guys who ended up doing the remake for the new Pet Cemetery. So, first of all, uh, sorry, I um, usually get this these reviews that I have people vote on posted earlier than this but you know life happens things come up and I just have like a normal job and a cr crazy life at times so the other thing is I've been running around outside doing some stuff and it's crazy hot so I might look a little bit red that's why sorry uh anyway yeah let's talk about starry eyes so this was streaming on shutter like I said it's a 2014 release uh Kevin Kolsch and Dennis Widmeyer yeah they did the Pet Cemetery remake which I have not seen yet but I've heard mixed reviews on it. Some people really like it. Some people really don't like it. So it's one eventually I'll have to see for myself to make an assessment. And hopefully at that point I can then do a review and you guys can see what I think of it. But the other thing when I was looking at their movie credits on IMDb.com was they did a documentary about Chuck Palahniuk, the, the author. And I didn't even know there was a documentary about this dude out there. And I like his books a lot. I think he's a very good author. He kind of, he he's not a horror writer, but a lot of the stuff he kind of has in there is like societally horrific. So, he, so he's kind of like horror adjacent in a sense, I would say. So I really like his stuff. So I want to check their documentary out. That's all I have to say about that. Um, so they do a good job of kind of immediately setting up the main issues that this that the main character in this film have uh she really is just kind of um hyper focused immediately in the film and it's just a really good job of instead of telling you what the issues are showing you what the issues are and like i said it's it is immediately they hit the ground running with establishing this these main issues and you know like this is what the film's basically going to play on this is what it's going to be about is solving these issues for this person or, you know, what they think is solving the issues. So, cause it's horror. So obviously not everything's going to go well. Uh, the, the movie is chock full of annoying types of people. And I believe that's intentional. I definitely believe that's intentional because it's kind of, I think it's kind of meant to make you, uh, bond with the main character more and kind of see from her perspective, like this person annoys the heck out of me. This person annoys the heck out of me. So if they actually annoy the audience member to some degree, then they're feeling what the main character's feeling at that time, which is a a really good way to kind of convey um, convey the situation of the character and and make people kind of sympathetic to what they're going through. So I I like like at first you don't really like that they have annoying characters, but you get it. Like it makes sense and it works and it helps. So, um, do, 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 do. And, and it also kind of plays to an overall feeling of the main character being ostracized as well. Like kind of everywhere she goes and every interaction she has, it doesn't seem like she's fitting or she feels comfortable, you know, and, and you really feel that and you see that in the film. Um, this film overall, it plays off a lot of people's fears of kind of getting lost and just kind of being another face in the crowd. And it's, it's with the backdrop of, like, Hollywood dreams, basically, which, you know, there are a lot of people who do it. So it's kind of more the perspective of a look at an aspiring actress who, you know, blah, 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 blah. A lot of, like, typical tropes about what they do. You know, she works at this restaurant, and then she's trying to do all these auditions, and not everything goes well. And, you know, it, it's typical stuff you've seen, but I think it that's because it's true of, of the Hollywood uh, setting that this is what people go through. And like I said, it, it plays to people's overall fears, not just people who are aspiring actors and actresses, but everyone's fears of just getting lost in the crowd and, and not being special and, and just like having to live a mundane life because everybody feels like they want to do something bigger, something better. Well, I guess I can't say everyone, but a lot of people do. A lot of people want to feel special. They want to do something special. They want to be recognized. They don't just want to be a person working at, you know, well, in this in this uh, movie, the the restaurant Taters. Not everyone wants to work at Taters, which I thought was a pretty funny name. But um, so I thought that this actually could be the film could overall be a commentary on the dangerous lengths that people go to with method acting, in particular, in order to succeed with an acting career. Um, I know that there have actually been a lot of stories. Well, I guess maybe not a lot, but enough stories that people get the idea. 
that when someone's into method acting and they immerse themselves so much in a character that they can really lose themselves and they can start getting destructive. I mean, obviously Heath Ledger with his uh, Joker character was a prime example. That led him down a very dark path from what I've read and eventually led to his death. And so um, I think this movie kind of kind of is is potentially a commentary on specifically method acting and how it can lead you down a dangerous path. It can lead you down a path that's unbelievably demanding on you as a person and can also alter you uh, and damage you or, uh, like to the nth degree. And But not only that, but also damage your relationships because once you change and you're not the person you used to be, your relationships also change. And who you used to be friends with and who used to support you in those old relationships become just that, old. And they're, they no longer become applicable because you're a different person. You have to change in order to be that person who now is has fame or is going for fame. Someone who is trying to become a part of the Hollywood machine or is a part of the Hollywood machine and the you know everything old just goes away. So it's also kind of this look at you know, even with, with this character, but I think it's a commentary on in general with actors and actresses, like where you start off and you're, you know, the people who are there supporting you and good to you, but eventually you, you're going to leave that behind and you want, and you need to leave it behind based off how Hollywood treats you. They make you commit to what they want. They kind of remake you in the image that they're looking for. So I think this movie does a good job of kind of hitting on those themes. Um, yeah, the change in personality. Uh, it plays up the issues of jealousy in relationships as well. And this is kind of like all types of relationships. I'm not I'm not talking about jealousy in the sense of like just a, like a romantic relationship. It hits a bunch of types of relationships. And I guess it's kind of more of like a friends and acquaintances relationships and how jealousy, there's a lot of like jealousy tension that goes along specifically within the actor and actress realm because, you know, people, some people are successful, you know, some people greatly, some people mildly, some people not at all. And these people know each other and they're friends, but it builds animosity, it builds jealousy, and it's kind of a look at that as well. Um, some of the acting in this, unfortunately, is very wooden. And I would say one role in particular that I find to be very important in the movie is extremely wooden and it's bad, bad acting. Thankfully, it's not the lead actress. I think she actually did a really good job in this. And I guess she's being rewarded for it because I look looking at her film credits, she is going to be in the new Doctor Sleep film that's being done by Mike Flanagan, by the way, who Mike Flanagan, outstanding, great writer, great director. Um, for people who don't know off, off the top of their head, he's the guy, just for one awesome, amazing example, he did The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix, that series. So you know Dr. Sleep's probably going to be good. There's already a trailer out for it. It's a sequel to The Shining. Um, if you haven't seen the trailer for Dr. Sleep, and especially if you like Stephen King stuff, if you like The Shining, check out that, that uh, trailer. It looks good. And she's going to be in the film. So good for her. And she did a great job in this film, so much deserved in my opinion. So the practical effects in this film, they're, you can tell it's low budget. You really can tell that it is low budget. But I think they use their money with practical effects very wisely. So it's very minimalistic with the practical effects. But it's used to great effect. Like they they use their money wisely with it. They they apply things properly. And it, it emphasizes what they want to in each situation that they use it. So great job on the practical effects. Like I said, you can tell it's low budget. But it's used... They use their budget wisely. They did a good job. And that kind of goes more to something I think about a lot of times when I'm watching independent films or lower budget horror films is I kind of like them more in the sense that I feel like it drives creativity a little bit more because when you're constrained by the budget itself, you have to get more creative to get the vision that you want out of it. And I just feel like that's how you get better stuff on a lower budget scale. And I mean, it kind of sucks in a sense because I hate that I feel that way because I also feel like these these actors and actresses and filmmakers, writers, directors, everything, that they should be getting more money than what they do at that low level. But at the same time, it also 
squeezes more creativity out. So I have this kind of issue with like, oh, I love like the creativity that comes out of it, but at the same time, like it's putting people in a crappy situation and I wish they could make more money doing that type of stuff. So, but yeah, just the thought I had while watching this. Uh, and then, oh, the pacing of it is actually pretty slow, unfortunately. But I also think that it's kind of necessary for the story because you need to feel it a little bit. I, I do think it could have, the pace could have been picked up a little bit or maybe some some stuff could have been edited out to make it feel a little bit faster. But um, at the same time, like I'm kind of more forgiving with that just because I feel like it goes with the story. So yeah, but it does feel slow at times. Uh, there's a bit too much signaled with the movie poster. Are we calling them movie posters now? Because like a lot of these don't actually go up as posters, especially if they're films that never make it to theaters. So I don't know what I call it, like the cover art? I don't, I don't even know at this point. Someone put a comment down there and tell me like, are we still calling these the movie posters? Are we calling it cover art or like thumbnail? I don't even know. Like, <laughs> I don't know at this point what to call it. So um, enlighten me, someone enlighten me down there. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I feel like whatever you want to call it, the, the poster art, signals a little too much about the film so if you're watching this review and you haven't seen the movie but you want to don't look at the picture for it do not look at that because it's going to signal a little too much and that's the thing like I looked at it and I was just like oh I see this in the picture so I'm assuming something and correct assumption so it's like it ruins stuff. It definitely ruins stuff. And I hate that type of thing. And they, it, it's not just done with that overall. It's done with trailers as well. Especially now nowadays, they put so much of the movie in trailers. Like, there are literally films I've seen trailers for where I'm just like, I'm not going to see that now because I saw the movie. Like, I, I got the entire story pretty much from it. And I don't feel like I need to see it. And that sucks. Uh, I feel that I feel that way less about horror movies than other genres, so I just need to make that qualifying comment. Uh, and then the last thing I have to say is, pretty good ending to this film. Actually, I do feel like it really steps up and ratchets up at the very end. It delivers with what horror people or horror audiences, I guess horror people, horror audiences really want in a film. So they do a good job delivering there. I think it's a pretty satisfying ending. Although it is a little slow. I think they definitely should have picked up the pacing a little bit on the very end. And it would have been even more satisfactory. But overall, pretty satisfying. Um, is this a unbelievably amazing film? Do I think it's a must watch for people? No, I don't. But is it solid? If you, Yeah, I mean, if you had interest in watching it at any point, definitely watch it. Just get, give it a try. Uh, if you even have like a mild inkling of like, well, maybe, then just do it. Just do it. You might love it. I mean, I liked it. I didn't love it, but that's a good thing. You know, liking something is totally fine. So with my five-star rating with half stars in play, I'm going to give this a solid three stars. Uh, better than half. It is pretty good. Like I said, I'd recommend it to anyone kind of thinking about it. Just go for it. And uh, definitely does make me want to see Pet Cemetery though, to see what uh, Kevin and Dennis did there because their directing was nice in this it looked good so and then also dr sleep because the main actress did a really good job anyway thank you everyone for checking this out uh i'll figure out where i'm going next on the movie review front but trust that i will be getting them out it I, i've been trying to stick to stick to kind of like a schedule where i'm doing like maybe two every weekend because that's basically when i have time but that you know, it's subject to change just because, you know, this isn't a job for me. I make no money doing it. It's just a fun thing I do in, in my free time. So it's a, it's a when I have free time type thing. So I'm going to try to do two each weekend, but if I can't, I apologize. Anyway, thanks for checking this out. Uh, please hit subscribe if you're not subscribed. Hit the notification bell. You always know when I put my videos up. Put some comments down there. Have you seen Starry Eyes? What are your thoughts? Also, tell me about the, the movie poster thing. <laughs> thing movie person versus the cover art whatever tell me i don't know what i'm talking about in that sense uh but thank you thanks again and in, anyway until next time keep it brutal